No, no, don't touch anything. Okay, hello everyone. Tom and Esther here. <laughs> and uh, we want to welcome everyone to part two of the Healing Corner. And uh, today we're going to be speaking about when you know better, you do better. Yes. And we do better. Right. So it's a very exciting uh, um, part. And this, this uh, part of the series is going to be a little bit more, we're a lot more positive. <laughs> um, you know, rather than the last time, it was a little heavy and a little hard to hear. And this time it's going to be, um, you know, I think more uplifting and more of the what can we do to make this happen? And okay. uh, it's going to be more exciting, right, Tom? Yeah. So you didn't like the reveal to heal? <laughs> You thought that was a little rough, huh? It was a little rough, yeah, even for me. Was, Every time yeah. I do it, I, I feel a little rough. Yeah, it's, it's, yes. a it's a challenge. It's a challenge. But it's we, we got to reveal the heal. We have to do it. We had to do it. Okay. That. So what time is it? We are ready to go. And um, here we go. Okay. So whoops. All right. So let's recap first, because we talked a lot about uh, a lot of many, many different things last time. And so it's important to recap so that we can uh, catch back up to where we left off. And maybe some of the people that didn't see us last time want to hear a little bit of who we are and how we got here and then all the other stuff. So we're going to recap a little bit and then we'll get right to it. OK, so let's start with, you know, how did we get here and basically Esther, that's me. <laughs> uh, so I'm an emotional intelligence uh, specialist with over 25 years wellness, um, leadership development, and spirituality. And I was diagnosed with an auto autoimmune disorder more than two decades ago. Um, that led me to experience a lot of very difficult symptoms, and my life was very challenging at that time. And so it left me looking for answers for a very, very long time. And when I got those answers was when I found Tom and uh, the medical medium information, which again, we will share with you more on this talk. And that's how I got here. How about you? Well, thanks, Esther. Um, as uh, Esther's slide uh, shows here, I'm an occupational therapist and uh, acupuncturist. Um, my late wife now, uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at the age of 55. Um, that was a little over 10 years ago. Um, and it, it was a, the beginning of her decline. Um, I started also experiencing uh, some health issues as a caregiver. It's a very stressful time to watch someone go through uh, this, this form of dementia where they were losing their abilities. Um, and uh, so I also was, my health was at risk and I started coming down with issues of um, rashes on my hands and feet and went to doctors and found out that I had what they called an autoimmune disorder. So, but no answers there. I mean, the, the medical community is trying their best to understand these things, but, but really there was no real answers for what was the cause. Um, and in this process uh, and struggling to understand why someone, why my ex-wife had come down with this terrible neurological disorder, uh, and why I was having these kinds of uh, health issues as a practitioner, uh, I was looking for what are the real answers? We don't really know the real causes. And, and so in that process, I also, I found medical mediums work. And um, so in that process of discovering that, I was able to heal you know, myself. Unfortunately for my wife, it was too late in the process for her to have fully recovered using this, these uh, issues, but she, she um, ended up being well cared for and her physical body actually uh, did very well com compared to other patients who had gone through the similar thing from, from what doctors and nurses would tell me, but how, how well her physical body had managed. So she, she, you know, it did help in one way of making that process a little easier on her instead of less uncomfortable. So I think that's, uh, you know, our move. To, we can now move on to the next slide. 
So um, before we continue, we definitely want to acknowledge our mentor and teacher and uh, medical medium. He is the gentleman that we provided all the information last time and this time also. And we just want to make sure that we always acknowledge him because without his work, um, you know, I know I I would still be struggling. And I so I just want to honor him and you know acknowledge him for everything he's doing in the world. Absolutely, uh, he is spreading really powerful information. So we encourage you to, to check it out for yourself. All right. So last time we talked about the root of the problem. And so without going too much into it, because this is just a recap, remember that these were some of the main issues of why we're seeing all the struggles that we are seeing in the world today. And so um, we have a very big and delicious list here of all the different components to some of these uh, chronic illnesses that we've been talking about. And also last time we talked about the, the liver being the second brain. And I know that there was uh, some spelling errors. And so we caught them and thank you for those that shared with us, mm -hmm. uh, both Tom and I being international. Uh, we have our <laughs> leading the you know blind leading the blind when it has to do with spelling. <laughs> so please forgive us. Uh, but when you do see a mistake, please call us out. We have no problem with that. Uh, so it is what it is. It makes us, makes us funny that way. Yes. Can we go back a slide for just a moment? Yeah. The, the root of the problem here was that for those, I think everyone here are so far, but we should just repeat this. The root of the problem is really what we're talking about when we talk about revealed to heal and the toxic environment we're living in aggressive pathogens, which we now know uh, exists in the world, uh, high levels of fat in the blood, dehydration, digestive issues, stress and, stress and emotional factors, and then misinformation. So this is a powerful slide, not to spend much more time here, but do take note that these are really at the root of what may be uh, for most chronic, the cause of chronic illness. Anything else? Well, on the liver, the liver is your, um, another analogy I like to use with the liver is that it's like a, a high tech TSA, you know, kind of like uh, what Israel would have if somebody was screening to go into Israel. Um, it's checking everything that comes into our body, the liver. Uh, it's, it's tagging it, identifying it, seeing if it can use it for nutrients, uh, minerals, uh, vitamins, any other uh, hormones, uh, all these things that it might need to make for us. It's a factory. The liver is a factory. It can do lots of things for us. It's a glycogen reserve center of the liver. So when we keep our liver in good shape, then we can really maintain very good health and yes. wellness. Yes. So that's why we focus on the liver. A lot about a lot of discussion about the, the food that we're exposed to or other of the, uh, the troublemakers in our, in our environment uh, all get absorbed by the liver. The liver is yeah. the first line of defense uh, and for us. do you remember, Tom, like when we would take walks in the morning and how faint I would feel, you know, just to just to tell you a quick uh, analogy here, or a quick story, um, you know, we would we would take walks in the morning and I wouldn't eat that much. And I was so used to, you know, eating a little something in the morning and I would have my uh, lemon water, you know, but it just wasn't enough. And what I was finding was that I was feeling very faint during those morning walks. Mm -hmm. And I would have to eat, you know, a fruit or something in order to not faint by the time we got home. But as I continued to clean up the liver, I saw a dramatic change. I was able actually now to walk much more uh, longer distances. I was able to, you know, take the walk, get back home, do the celery juice, have enough time to eat the fruit that I needed to eat. And it was a big shift. Yeah. So every time my liver is gunked up, I saw the difference. Yeah, it made it a lot easier on me. I didn't have to carry a backpack of fruits and vegetables because any time we took a small walk, we were, it felt like we were going on a big hiking trip. Exactly. Because Esther needed those reserves, but those glycogen reserves are now back up and running better and she's not as stressed about it. Exactly. So it's a good move. Then. Yes. All right. So we talked about what is really going on. So real quick, what is really going on? Just to recap. Yeah, well, this slide is very powerful too. Over the last hundred years, we as humans have been experimenting with pathogens. We've been tinkering with viruses and, and bacteria in laboratories. So, you know, we see now that in the modern times, this tinkering and, you know, again, you know, 
science needs to learn and needs to and understand what these microbes were doing back in the day. But unfortunately, we see now that these microorganisms, these, these pathogens have mutated and they're more aggressive and the more challenging to us as humans. So that's one of the things we're dealing with. And then secondly, you know, what, how did they, when they tinker with them in the laboratory, how did they, how did they get them to grow? How did they get them to thrive? And they, and that's something we talked about, you know, they used as a medium eggs to uh, actually help replicate and grow uh, viruses in laboratories. So now viruses have an affinity towards that food. They can really thrive and, and survive with the food when we're eating foods with eggs in them. And, um, they were also experimenting on how to kill these pathogens and how to develop you know, counteractive measures, which then led to mutations of these organisms. So as smart as we are as humans, these organisms seem to have a little bit of an upper hand on, on surviving and thriving as much as we wanna tinker around with them. And we know we're paying that price now. Um, and the last one, can you go back? I didn't see the last. Uh, so, um, so basically, you know, these are the key issues that's happening and we need to be aware of as we talk about how do we handle this from a boosting our immune system and uh, the intake of foods and how to protect ourselves from other toxins in our environment. So what are the troublemakers? So remember, we talked about all of these. We talked about, you know, I just mentioned eggs, the eggs. Yeah, I didn't want you to get too far ahead. Yes. Don't give them the, you know, don't cheat. Don't let them cheat. And uh, a lot of these are the troublemakers that we talked about last time. Right now, you see on the top of the list, eggs, dairy, pork and other animal products. Um, eggs and dairy primarily feed pathogens. So we don't wanna do that. We don't want, if we wanna protect ourselves from an infection, a viral infection, a bacterial infection, we wanna minimize those, those, those food sources. Pork is high in fat, so very hard in the liver. Okay, gluten feeds bacteria in the gut. You know, many, many people think that they have a gluten allergy. When in fact, if we look at medical medium's work, he's made it clear to us, it's not that they're allergic to gluten, it's that, Gluten is feeding the bad bacteria in your gut. And that bad bacteria is what's causing the issues in the digestive tract. And then we have corn and soy, which are GMO products. You know, they're also fed to animals and, and uh, they also feed pathogens. Food additives, excess salt, caffeine chocolate, uh, you know, matcha tea, black tea, green, even green tea, which is considered a health food. We gotta be careful because the caffeine is not friendly to our liver. Uh, these energy drinks, many chemicals in there, industrial oils, the high fat, uh, rancid and, and, and really um, toxic oils that, are, that we're really not supposed to be ingesting it can cause lots of digestive problems. Canola oil is very tough on the digestive tract and is really hard on us. So, and on the liver. Fish, we, we talked about a little bit in that last uh, presentation about, unfortunately, you know, heavy metal toxicity in fish, mercury and, and various other heavy metals. And then least on the, on the list is alcohol. So we put that way down there low, so not to really Make so I always say time. having the Russian background, that's okay with the alcohol. I have a little vodka once in a while. It's all right. <laughs> Esther can hardly smell it before she It's true. She I'm a terrible Russian. It. I'm a terrible so, Russian. So not, not, really, not really one to play around with too much. Just be conscious. Moderation there is very important. So last, last time we had a challenge for everybody. So raise your hand if you took on the challenge and you stayed away from the troublemaker foods. Raise your hand so we can see you. There we go, David. David, good, good job. job. We can't see everybody, but if you did, congratulations and very good. We're very, very proud of you. So, so can we stop here for a second? Just a little yes, quick thing. So just real quick. If, if David, if you looked at this and anybody who looks at this, if you try to monitor the intake of these, these foods in your diet, you'll see that you run across this every day, several times a day. And that's one of these things that we have to, it, it opened my eyes when I wanted to heal to say, wow, this is what I have to avoid. This is hard. This is challenging. These, these are foods that we're attracted to and we've been taught to eat a lot of. And now these are foods that we need to watch out for. So very challenging. And, and uh, I think that was the key for our Reveal to Heal to just see how much this food infiltrates or these troublemakers infiltrate our daily life. Totally. So, all right, so very good recap. And uh, now we're gonna talk about, so when you know better, you do better. And this is, um, this is where we're gonna start now with this much different energy moving into this flow. And so some of the pillars of success, we have the foods for life, we have the herbs and supplements, emotional health and spirituality, 
um, clarity, uh, uh, support and tribe and gratitude. So these are some of the pillars that we really need to anchor on in order to make this happen because it's not going to happen by itself. Trust me. You have the pizza or the vegetable. Trust me, I'm going for the pizza. <laughs> so it's <You>. not <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do, okay? Yes. So how do we do this? And some of these pillars are all of these pillars are going to be your key. So let's get into it. Ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. And last week we actually had a question about that. You know, we had a question from someone who said, you know, I know what things I need to do, but it's just so hard to do it. So we're going to get there. We're going to address that in just a minute. Yeah, and also on in, in this note, let's let's lift it up a little bit. Let's make it a little lighter. In this, in this, uh, when we know better, we do better. We're going to show you that what we talked about last time was what to avoid, right? And that you know is like hard. You got to avoid certain things. Here we're going to talk to you about the freedom to choose all. There's all these other foods you can have. Yeah. So this is the freedom to yes. move forward in a powerful way. Yes. You're not restricted like we were talking about last time avoiding yes. now we're looking at what can you absolutely have fun with and that's go right. out and find right. new ways to explore good food intake and you can actually have that pizza if you do it the right way so we're gonna talk about that because mm. we have been able to i have been able to have my pizza and still and eat stay, it too and eat it too <laughs> and still stay uh you know um still stay good and feel good and be okay with, with the cheat once in a while. So, all right. So foods for life. So what are we talking about here? You know, and I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people are now getting more and more into the plant-based world. We're talking about, you know, eat more fruits and vegetables. That's an obvious thing. It's like, duh, right? Well, everybody, we've said that we've known that for a long time, but we really haven't understood the power of that. And That's hopefully, right. hopefully in this presentation, we'll be able to see that. Yes. So what we're saying here is eat more of, and here you have a list, just a basic list of the things that we want to increase in our diet. And when you do want to have that cheat, right? Because yes, sometimes people may think, well, you guys are Puritans. You guys, you know, you guys eat just vegetables and fruits and, and, you know, you guys are like little goats, you know, like me sucking on my herbs, you know, it's true, you know, like I eat my raw herbs every day, but I'll tell you what, since we've been able to increase these foods, I know for me, I'm able to now cheat a little bit and still be able to feel good and not have all the, um, all the problems that I had before, right. because I am able to incorporate all these, uh, in, you know, to put more of these foods in my diet, which is really helping me. But there is one specific thing that we're going to talk about in a minute, which is really, really another big key. Well, just to, just to, for some clarity, in addition to what yes. Esther said, I think Esther, you're saying that you can cheat here, and I want them to understand yes. this in a way that really only makes when sense. you're not healing. <laughs> right. So if someone is struggling, is in our clinics, they're struggling with a real health yes. condition. You know, cheating is really not an option. Moderation right. is not okay. Right. Because you, the moderation will feed pathogens that are causing the problems, and so you'll never resolve the health issue. Right. So now Esther is describing that she's over this last couple of years, almost two years. She's now, you know, improved her health. So when she has a craving for something like pizza or, you know, maybe a some burger other burger or, or whatever like it that, is. Yes, we do keep it to a minimum. You know, I don't see her doing this every day. And that even, even when she does it a little too often, she'll start to recognize the pitfalls yes. of doing that. Yes. But let's go back to what the, the real, like, the, what can we eat more of? Now, one of the first things on this list is potatoes. Yes. But, you know, some, a lot of places have made potatoes bad. Right. Or they're fat, they're starchy, they're too much starch, they're too they're white they're, they're, they're they've been avoided right now we're not you got to be careful here about potatoes so how do we eat potatoes which ones so we don't want to have french fries right. that doesn't really qualify and why is that because they're fried uh, okay <laughs> usually in, in, in industrial oil right 
which is, you know, somewhat toxic to yes. us. But, you know, baked potatoes, steamed potatoes, you know, other ways to dress up you know, dressings on the potatoes yes. using, you know, non-vinegar things like lemon and spices and herbs and small amounts of like good oils, like olive oil or avocado oil or coconut oil. These are things that are okay and we can have fun with, you yes. know. As you can see, the rest of the list, sprouts, celery, asparagus, spinach, cilantro, parsley, lettuce, garlic, kale, cucumbers, beets, tomatoes, man, we can make an amazing salad right there, right? right? But these are things, if we can get more of these foods in our bodies, these foods have antiviral, antipathogen properties. They have ways to take heavy metals out of our body. We don't really have, we've lost, I think, some respect for how powerful mm -hmm. plant foods can be, mm -hmm. especially as we keep them closer to their original raw states. Yes. And that's, that's a big part right there is that the cleaner and the more simpler that you can eat, the better your body will respond. Great. Yeah. Okay. So one of the biggest secrets here that we have learned from this medical medium information is juicing celery. And celery has actually been one of those keys that I will tell you for myself, it has been like a golden parachute. It, yeah, whatever you want to call yeah, it. It saves, it saves it's, people. It's been a lifesaver on so many levels. Mm -hmm. And so why don't you tell us what it does? Well, you know, why don't we talk about the process a little bit too? I don't know if we go into that in the slide Just, presentation, yeah, quickly. but you know, every morning Esther and I have a routine and we've learned this from the medical medium uh, process from his, from his educational work is that we use celery juice. When you juice celery, and we're talking about not just one stick of celery, but the whole bunch, and you turn it into a glass of juice, you get rid of the, the fiber, you turn celery into medicine. And we do that every morning on an empty stomach. And when you do that, you are now, um, put, any bacterias or viruses that have been over throughout the evening or overnight have been trying to multiply or gain a foothold in your system, celery juice will actually help your body take them out. They cannot thrive. Well, celery, the, the mineral salts, the cluster salts in, cel in celery um, will actually strip the virus's shields away from them, not allow them to proliferate. So um, in addition, it helps the digestive system tremendously by be rebuilding our hydrochloric acid. You know, the stomach is designed to be, even in Chinese medicine, we talk about this, a device that cooks and breaks down the food. But, you know, with modern diets and processed foods and high fat foods and chemicals in our foods, it, it makes our digestive system work way too hard. And we burn out our hydrochloric acid. And that's why people maybe as, as they age and, and, and get older, they start to have digestive problems. Right. I mean, younger people now are having yes. digestive problems. So it's happening on all levels. So celery juice is a miracle cure or a miracle tool, tool. to help, you know, really replenish and boost your system. It's almost, you know, you can, you can really gain a foothold on, on health again by starting this process. And wherever you are, wherever you are in your condition, you can start the celery juice and you will see a big difference. So, and, and juicing can be a yeah. little bit of a process. So maybe yes. in our future uh, presentations, we'll talk about more how to, and as we work on developing our YouTube channel, we'll be showing how to do make celery juice, how to do it, all these things. But Esther does have, a, if you have questions about what kind of juicer is the best, she's mentioned one here online. And we do know that these are some of the best juicers if you're going to be right. doing this. Yep. Okay. So herbs and supplementation. So this is a basic list. Uh, we do carry a lot of these things here in the clinic. We are, uh, well... Tom mainly, because this is Tom's clinic and he's scrutinized over the years, scrutinized um, these companies to be the purest, most best product you can get anywhere. And the minute that he feels that something's off, we call the company and we talk to them. We, we get clear what's going on with the product and what's the ingredients. And usually we will discontinue using those products. So um, I can you know, I can say 
wholeheartedly that I feel very comfortable with the products that we we, we have here, well, but the, this is just a basic list. Yeah, and these are a lot of products here, yes. so you can see. And again, these are products I have used over, over the years, a lot of them, but through looking at medical mediums work, he's brought a lot of clarity to the use of herbs and supplements. Um, and you see here, the celery juice is, is one of the key herbal medicines. It's not a, not, not a pill you buy. You have to drink celery juice, by the way, after you make it. You, mm -hmm. can't, you can't let it right. sit or linger too long. You usually drink it within 30 minutes. And then you try not to eat anything for about you know, 20 to 30 minutes after you ingest celery. Um, before celery too, remember we wanna, we, I don't know where the slides go as far as the uh, hydration, but we even can do a little lemon water to mm -hmm. try to flush the system even further because hydration is vital for flushing toxins out of the body. Remember, we've been exposed to lots of toxins. We got to get them out. Mm -hmm. Either taking toxins in or you're getting them out. Right. You know, those are the two things. We'll get to slides about that. Right. But the immune system can benefit from various herbs. Golden seal fights bacteria and viruses along with echinacea. Many of you have heard these. L-lysine is an, is an antiviral. It's like a fire extinguisher to viruses. You take that in your system and your system has now a tool to help extinguish a, a viral overload, trying, yes. to, trying to take over the system. Olive leaf is an antibacterial, an ancient tree. Olive, the olive tree goes back in history for how long? It's a, it's, a, it's a medicine sitting right under our nose and that's the leaf, not the, not the actual olive or olive oil. Mm -hmm. So olive leaf extract, zinc, vital. Most of us, most of the people on the planet are zinc deficient. And we've heard even with COVID protocols, people are starting to take more zinc, Very good. right? To try to help yes. their boost their immune system. Yes. Cat's claw, otherwise known as uña de gato, very powerful herb from the Amazon forest. Uh, liver function, milk thistle, globe artichoke leaf, dandelions, NAC, turmeric. These are powerful uh, for, uh, herbs and formulas that can um, really help our liver, improve our liver function. Antioxidants. You got resveratrol, all of these, the, all the B vitamins, vitamin C, important, really important, a good quality vitamin C. So these are just different things that we talk about um, that you can work into your uh, into your protocol mm -hmm. as you're trying to get better. Now I would call, I would tell I tell most patients now I don't even bother with starting on herbs right away and formulas right. Right. because unless they're willing to change their diet, these things are not going to be as effective. Mm -hmm. You've got to be willing to look at avoiding the troublemakers, taking in foods that'll help the body detoxify and, and build itself up. Mm -hmm. And then when we add these, these supplements and these herbs, we have a very powerful combination for healing. Agreed. So it's, it's, yes. it is the you know, awareness of what the troublemakers are. It is the uh, awareness of what foods are support our immune system and help us detoxify and build our immune system, kill off pathogens. And then knowing how to support, use support with herbs and supplements, knowing how to rest and recover and knowing how to exercise and move, Right. you know, and having, a, and then Esther's going to talk about a mindset too, emotional, yes. uh, the emotional well-being, our emotional and psychological well-being, all that matters when right. we're trying to heal. Right. So before we get to that, one last thing here, you know, we have the healing teas and we, you know, we drink tea. This now is a good time to take a little yes. bit of hydration. We're drinking we drink the number tea. one listed item there, lemon balm. Uh -huh. We love that one. Lemon balm is a wonderful tea, very light. None of these teas, by the way, have any caffeine in them. If you'll see on this list, chamomile, ginger, fennel, nettle leaf, raspberry leaf, peppermint, spearmint, hibiscus, thyme. Thyme tea has been a fun one. We've had a lot. You know, if you, if you drink just plain thyme and you boil, take some boiling water, and you make tea out of it. It's actually quite delicious. Mm -hmm. And if you need to, you can cheat and have a little bit of maple syrup or raw honey into, yes, these, in the, into these teas. And these, by doing that combination, raw honey uh, or a little bit of maple syrup and any one of these teas or combinations of these teas, you are adding an immune boosting system to your, tea, to your, to your digestive system. You're also adding to hydration. And you buy yourself more time. Well, you yeah, get it. Buy uh, bad joke. Bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Let's stick to the. Let's stick to the script here. All right, got it. All right, very All right. good. Now, um, go ahead to the next one. Okay. All right. So I like to crack myself up sometimes when we get too heavy or too serious. All right. So this part is going to be my favorite part because you know this has to do with so okay. Great, Esther and Tom. So we know better. Awesome. Okay, you just gave us a bunch of things to do. That's great. Some of them we already know. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Okay. But now, how do we actually do better? Right? How do we do better? How do we take this step to start making these changes? Because, like I said, 
pizza or vegetable? Can you put the vegetable on the pizza? You can, <laughs> but it's still that choice. And how do you right, do it? We'll so there. let's get into it. So this is where we talk about EQ to the rescue. Hey, that rhymes. It does. I didn't even realize that. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So this is something that I created over the years. It's called the awareness diet. And this is something that has helped me move myself from actually choosing you know, the wrong things for me into the right things for me. And, you know, sometimes it's not really about good or bad. It's really about how do we want to feel? What is it that we want to experience, right? So for me, whenever I had the struggles of wanting to experience something more fulfilling, something that was not destructive to me, I would choose to go through my awareness diet. So let's go through it. So the number one step here is awareness. The identification of your situation and its effect on others, a, a, aka, as I like to say, you are a level of crazy, okay? So really getting, really getting clear, really getting some awareness of, okay, there's a situation here and I really want to improve something. I want to really change something. So in this case, we're talking about changing our diet or really moving towards a lifestyle that's a little bit more healthy for me for us. And so the first thing you got to do is you got to become aware that there is a problem here or that there's some improvements needed. Maybe it's not a problem, but there is some need for improvements. Okay. okay. The second step is making a decision. So, you know, decision means you have to decide, you have to decide, which is a huge thing. Most people, we don't even realize that we're making a decision every second of the day, but the bigger decisions, they really take a minute. You know, if you notice, right? And anything that we've ever had to do that was really, really important, it took a minute to really make a decision. But once you made that decision, it's like, it just goes like a hundred miles an hour. Things just start manifesting. They just start moving. So we really want to make sure that we decide to move towards a desired resolution and coming from a place of current situation so, so maybe, wherever you are today maybe to like bring some uh um practicality yeah like the the vegetable or the or the pizza right so first you have to be aware that there's that's a choice right. vegetable or the pizza right because right. otherwise if you think that food doesn't matter then right. you're going to choose pizza right exactly. so if you become aware that maybe food does matter right. you got to find how does how do i get a vegetable to make to be a satisfying or to at least satisfy me so that i can avoid the pizza that's right right then you have to make that decision is that what right. you're saying so you have to yeah. make a decision to find a solution to for that craving you might have yes. for that level of crazy you might that's have right. for that's you right. know that other food that's and we right. also got to say here too these foods have an addictive quality to them, mm -hmm. right? So you mm -hmm. have a, a series of microbiomes and microorganisms in your body that are now not so good for us, but they crave these foods. Mm -hmm. They somehow have a way to hijack our nervous systems mm -hmm. and kind of get us to want this stuff. It's right. kind of an addiction almost. Mm -hmm. So the way to break them, to break that addiction is because we gotta be aware of it. That's right. And if we make a decision to not feed them, then that craving will slowly di dissipate, will get less and less. Yes. Okay. So Very good. Good job. Okay. So then action, take appropriate action towards the desired results. So AKA ways to manage the crazy with the tools of EQ. So, you know, the different tools are what we just gave you and making sure that we are taking an action. So it's great that we know all this information. It's great that, you know, we go on to medical medium side and, or our site and you, you know, you, you become abundant with all this information. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. But if you don't take the action yeah. and you're just looking at it, <laughs> you got to do something. Nothing's going to happen. Well, we so. took some action today, didn't we? You said you want, we're looking for lunch food. We'll use that example. Yes. And we, you know, you're like, we're trying to eat clean because yes. we know we wanted to, we've been, you know, we've had a little rough week. So sometimes we've had a little cheats this week and we know it's time to get back on track so we went to a um, middle eastern place yes looking for fresh cut vegetables yes. you know maybe some good healthy fats like a little hummus 
a little tahina, you know, and then eggplants and all the, and, and, and then we had uh, stuffed grape leaves. So we found really- Stop it, you're making people hungry. <laughs> so, but, it, but it just goes to show you, we can find some very tasty foods yeah. that can, we can take action with. That's right. And we can like be happy about right. and feel fulfilled. Even, even Esther got a gluten-free pita. That's right. So she even bypassed the pita. Yes. and got gluten-free. Yes. So, you know, it was just an example to show action. Absolutely. We've searched and searched and you find ways to find the right kind of foods. And become creative. Yes. And that's part of it. Yes. Become creative. And once you, like I said, once you decide, then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you start getting this creativity going through you and now you're taking action we went even as far as to skip esther got me to, to realize i'm more plant-based so i was going for the falafel and we even skipped the falafel today just because it's fried yeah. so she said tom you know you sure you want to choose that it's fried and i was like you know you're right i shouldn't let's just skip that and just go with all the fun veggies that go along with it right and it was just as satisfying without the falafel exactly so sometimes i will still choose falafel yeah but um, when i'm trying to be a little better and, right. I, and I know better than I'm going to do better. Right. right. <laughs> and then gratitude, you know, being grateful for the growth and the transformation, because at the end of the day, every time you do something that is really, you know, moving you towards your highest good, your body's going to thank you. Your soul's going to thank you. You know, your partner's going to thank you because you're not going to be like gassy. <laughs> or goodness. having some sort of problems, <laughs> you know. So gonna your be, partner's going to yes. be very grateful. There's so a, it's a gratefulness all around, that's right? True. That's true. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of other secondary benefits. Thank yes. goodness for that. <laughs> so really quick here, you know, just for those folks that may say, "Well, what is what is EQ, Esther? What are you talking about?" So EQ, what is emotional intelligence and emotional quotient? And as you can see here, is really it's a philosophy it's a teaching it's a it's a it's a way of uh being it's the ability to recognize and understand your emotions and the impact they have on your behavior and on the behaviors of others so it's kind of like you know when i say the aka level of crazy it's how do you recognize your level of crazy and how do you manage it all right so it's really the ability to understand yourself and then be able to uh, uh, operate in a way that's affecting the environment around you. I like the analogy how we we all know about IQ. Right. Right. We're but, gonna get there. Right. But I know. <laughs> but I guess. But see, when I, when you first brought up emotional intelligence, I was like, wow, we never. I never heard that quantified that way. Yes. So I like that that we can stop and think that we do yes. have this other aspect, not just cognitive intelligence, but our emotions. Do we, yes. do we spend time understanding them? And I think this is powerful work. Yes. Why are you always one step ahead of me? <laughs> just can't help it can i <laughs> so and then emotional quotient which is the eq part is the score of your emotional intelligence faculty so it's kind of like what tom just said the iq everybody knows what that is eq is the emotional number it's your score and we're going to talk about that in just a second here so a growing body of research is proving that emotional, that these emotional muscles are the key to the following items. So optimum health and well-being, recovery from illness, personal growth and success, relationship management and sustainability, social management and um, uh, societal contribution, life balance and happiness. And so as you can see here, you know, a lot of us may be very smart and that's awesome but it's 25% success and short-term gains. Cause you could be really, really intelligent, you know, when we call it say book smart, but let's say some people it's very hard for them to maybe get along with others, or maybe they don't understand themselves as much, you know, and their emotions tend to uh, take control and they're just having a really hard time in life because we know that life's about relationships. It's about other people. Mm -hmm. um, so, and so, so they don't, they have trouble interacting in life, yes. even though they're, they have the understanding, they have the IQ yes. on how to do something. They have trouble interacting and fulfilling those actions to get Correct. things done. Correct. And it's not just with relationships, it's with everything. Mm -hmm. It's with what we're talking about today, work, you know, with be... work and, and, and diet and all these different things. Yes. So you can know a lot, but you're not, you're not able to implement these things into action. And so high EQ serves up to uh, 75% of success and fulfillment resulting in long-term gains. 
So the higher your EQ, the more successful you can be in all aspects of life. So it's a very powerful tool. So the next tool here is spiritual clarity and purpose. And why is that so important? And we know it's important because number one, we're talking to TAO here, right? Is that TAO? This is a TAO group, right? Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure that we got the right group here. And we know that in TAO, we study spirituality. We know that there's a reason why we're here. We know that there's a bigger purpose in life. And so we all have to understand that there's a reason and we must grow and transform. So when we know that this work that we're doing with the, um, with the food, how is this related to the food and how is this related to our diet and our health? Because we are here to grow, we're here to transform. So if we're not really doing things that are helping us be better on all aspects of life, not just our you know, spirituality, but our, also our physicality too, that's all part of that transformation. And I know that some people, I've heard some people say, oh, it's just the body, it doesn't matter, you know, as long as my spirit is good and my, my mindset is good, but I'm sorry, with all due respect, it's not true because everything plays together. It's mind, body, spirit. You can't be a fully functional, healthy person if your body is not healthy too. It is your vehicle here. And you have to make sure that you take care of your vehicle so that you can be a service to yourself and to others. So it's a very important aspect that we have to remember. Now, remember in our last um, presentation, we someone asked us the question, she knows what to do, well, but she doesn't exactly. know how to do it because she struggles with those the, the decision-making. Right. So how do we grow our EQ? Can you help us with that, Esther? Well, actually, right perfect, on, timing. perfect timing. Right? <laughs> I was like, really? You're going to take me down that rabbit hole right now? But, <laughs> but we're actually right on time here. Right, so, right. so here's the thing, guys. You know, here's some, EQ, some more EQ tools to consider. Intuition and spiritual awareness. So understanding why we're here and the big picture. Your life path and purpose and how to use the spiritual laws to create results. And so all of these things are very important. Spirituality is a very big part of a lot of these things that we're talking about. And they will give you the why. They will give you the power. They will give you the strength to, to know that you have to move forward and you have to make shifts in your life. And they will also give you the understanding that if we are making excuses for not taking new decisions and making new choices, there might be a reason why. There might be an emotional reason why. There might be something we're trying to hold on to. Uh, maybe we're comforting ourselves somehow. Maybe we're going through grief. Maybe we're going through something that's just kind of like keeping us stuck. And all of these things here that we're talking about right here with spiritual awareness and intuition and all of those spiritual laws will help us understand that there's a bigger reason for our for us to push ourselves through it. Can I ask you a question here, Esther, before you change the slide? No, no, I'm not changing the slide. Oh, okay. I'm just moving this. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, the intuition, how do we develop intuition? I know we talk about spiritual awareness. We can learn. We can go to TAO. We can understand how connected we are with everyone and, and reflect. What about intuition? Do you have any input on that? Intuition is a very big construct and to go into that right now <laughs> i really can't okay. however um you know from a really basic perspective when we're talking about foods and we're talking about what we're doing today with where we are today i would say using your intuition in the in the sense that when you eat something check in get really quiet and check in how you feel check in how you feel right after you eat that food or after you've, you've exposed yourself to something like, um, like a product, a smelly product that has Perfume tons of fragrance in it, yeah. or you walk into an environment and it's very fragrancy in there and it smells super toxic and ask yourself, how do I feel right now? You have to make conscious decisions so, on going through this process. But you so know, if I hear you correctly, intuition is really quieting yourself to yes. think, hear that inner voice. Yes. And then ask yourself a question, make choices. Like you, you intuition it. If I go up against pizza and a vegetable, right. I intuitively know the vegetable's better for me. Right. Right. But so well, that's logically. A, logically. Logically, we know that. But intuitively, 
you, you know what, you're going to have to eat the pizza Dang. and then stop and really do a check-in. How do I feel right now? And usually you will know in the next few minutes, how that pizza made you feel. Did it make me feel heavy? Did it make me feel weird? Did it make me feel uplifted? Did it make me feel, Ooh, I have tons Lightning. of energy. Right. I can go run a marathon right now. So these are all very important parts. So intuition is awareness. Yes. Stopping and looking and yes. listening to yourself. Right. Okay. Now, from a more basic perspective, and this is where we talk about the basic human needs, and this is based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And many of you, I'm sure, have heard of this. And this talks about food, water, shelter, safety, warmth, health, resources, certainty, variety, connections with others and sexual intimacy, social contribution, self-esteem, confidence, significance, and achievement. And then the last one is self-awareness and uh, creativity, intuition, problem solving, and acceptance. And why is this here? This is here in this specific order to tell us that we can be spiritual all day, every day. But if our basic needs are not met, meaning if our water, our shelter, our safety is not met, forget about it. You see how intuition is all the way at the bottom? Yeah. You are not going to give you're not going to be have. You're not going to have the ability to access no, some intuition. You're not going to give be a in crap. Survival. <laughs> you're not going to give a crap yeah. because you really need to make sure that you're safe. You have a roof over your head, and you are in a space where you can actually create the room for the self awareness and the intuition. And so, um, you know, sometimes you have very spiritual people that put themselves in these situations where they are, let's say, homeless or um, uh, you know, they, they don't have a lot of resources or whatever, but they on purpose did that in order to do some sort of experiment or they wanted to feel how that, you know, that, that experience is or whatever it is. And that's a different conversation. We're talking about when you have no control over something and it's happened and now you want to achieve some of these, um, these higher levels of awareness, you really have to make sure that the basics here are met. And part of that is your health. Your health is one of those basics. So you have to make the decisions in order to move towards that. Well, in this, in this case too, that goes to show you that some people who are struggling financially, yes. right? And don't have a lot of resources. How can we ask them to be looking at food choices? They might have only access to certain basic food choices. Yes. And we're trying, we fortunately in our society have more access now. Mm -hmm. So we're not, you know, we're not saying that you know, when you don't have choices, sure, you, you, can, you have to eat the foods you're available. You need nourishment right. if you only have certain access to certain foods. And I think that's a movement in the society to gain, like for inner cities and places like that, to gain more access to gardens, local gardens, to vegetable production, to fresh fruits and vegetables, not just processed foods, because those communities are at risk and are being affected negatively by eating right. processed right. chemical foods that doesn't support their growth and their wellness. Yeah. So there is that we, we're, we're not, there's never a judgment here about no. what people are going through. This no. is about choices right. and I think awareness. And if we can help even from a societal point of view, help even like, like the movement in inner cities to get more fresh fruits and vegetables right. accessible to right. all the, all individuals. Well, not just those of us who have the means who can go to course. Whole Foods and spend our whole paycheck on fancy vegetables and organic foods. Right. So there is this balance, but yes. I, and I think your, your Maslow's hierarchy of needs here explains that too. Yes. And the other thing I want to mention is, you know, we've all had hard times. And I remember when I was not, you know, uh, I wasn't working, I was having a, you know, a hard time with finances. And that was actually a time that I ate the cleanest because I didn't have a lot of funds to play with. And I actually made really great choices at that time. I remember, you know, being very creative, going shopping, and I would, you know, buy like, let's say a, a container of salsa and thinking, okay, I have my vegetables in there. I have my tomatoes and my onions and my garlic. I have, um, you know, I would buy another thing and it would have, you know, one or two items in there, but it was always very simple, clean, healthy foods that weren't a lot of money. And I was getting nourished even more than I than I did when I had a little bit more money to mm. spend. And, so, you didn't, and, it's, and it's fascinating. You didn't spend that money on fast foods like correct. McDonald's or correct. Burger King or Kentucky Fried Chicken because that's very affordable. Right. But it isn't the highest quality exactly. foods if we eat it on, a, on an ongoing basis. Exactly. Okay. So it is doable. And uh, that's what we want you guys to focus on. 
So let's talk about the next tools here. These are the goals, support, and tribe. And, um, and this is something that Tom, the first one you see here is POP, which is something that Tom's used in his clinic for a very long time. And we decided to start using it. You know, I was like, oh, that's good stuff. So we started using it in our presentation. And so- Well, actually it's a little bit of, I don't know if you know this history, but I actually used it with my kids when they were younger and oh. they struggle with their homework. And I would see them all frustrated and upset. And I would look at them and say, what's going on? This is so hard. I can't, I don't understand it. So I would always use, well, just remember, I, used, I didn't have the O at the time. I just I said, remember these two letters, PP. And they would look at me like, what do you mean? I was like, you know, be persistent and be patient and you'll learn the material. And now I've added optimism. So I think that's a good way to look at, at our lives. You know, we're trying to do something new. You're trying to eat a better diet. You know, you have to be persistent. You right. know, you're going to fumble. You're going to stumble. Make baby steps. Do what you can to get rid of a, a trigger food or a troublemaker food and then try to find new foods. You know, just but you got to be persistent and then you got to be patient with the process. You know, it's going to you're going to it's going to take time to see maybe some changes and then just be optimistic that you can, you know, heal and you can overcome things if you take this path. Right. So measurable and realistic goals, stay positive and hopeful patience with your process, keep your eyes on the target at all costs. Uh, you know, mentors, you want to, you want to really focus on getting someone that you trust, someone that has results, someone has a really good track record. You know, I, I remember how I would hire my, my coaches is if I saw that they looked like lead by example, that they were, you know, um, uh, I'm going to make up a word here, exemplifying. Is that a good word? Or I don't know. I always make up esterisms, we call them, right? Yes. So I make up my own words, but I would look for people that were talking or walking the talk, you know, not just, not just they would say the right words, but they looked completely opposite of what they were saying. So you really want to focus on finding mentors and leaders that are doing what they're talking about. And then your community and tribe. You really want to be around like-minded people, people that are doing the work, you know, really immersed in what you're looking to create because it's very hard. It is very challenging living what we're telling you and we struggle with it. So if we didn't have- And so know, many of our friends struggle with us. That's right. right when we go out to, they're always worried about when we go out to dinner with them, where they're going to pick, where to go and this and that. We, we find that interesting. We, we find that we've taught them that they're aware. They're aware that we have choices we'd like to make. Right. And they're being conscious about like, considering those choices. And then they're even looking at our choices. And oftentimes we'll say, wow, our meals look very appealing compared to what they ordered. Right. And they were, you know, more plant-based. So, yeah. you know, we, you just got to, you can, you can have a way to interact and have positive influences on others. Right. But by having that community though, I think is very powerful. Very said. powerful. And then uh, taking action and consistently doing the work. You know, if you fumble, like, you know, like we said, we cheated a little bit. We, we notice on our bodies, we say, okay, you know what? We've done enough of that. Let's go back. Got to jump back on the wagon and, uh, and stay coachable. You know, we don't know what we don't know. So stay coachable. There's many times that we continue to learn from other people. We learn from other sources. And we're, we're, all of us are still students. Nobody's, you know, 100% uh, there, I don't think, you know? Yeah, and the, the old saying that I, I use with some patients, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. Yeah. Right, you just gotta take those steps and keep walking forward. Right. And then we go back to gratitude. So gratitude, you know, and this is not an easy one, I'll be honest with you. There are some days that, you know, I am not, I just, I don't wake up, gra you know, grateful. I wake up very grouchy <laughs> and he knows I, it. <laughs> I, I can vouch for those days. <laughs> and, uh, but I have my moments and I, you know, I, I snap back and I work on, you know, being grateful for the little things. I practice having a playful heart. You know, yes. humor for me is number one tool. So when I got nothing else, I go to humor and that just snaps me back. And then I trust in my growth and in my transformation. And I know that I'm doing this for a bigger reason. And that also keeps me focused. Any additions here? Oh, all good. All right. So, so take your baby steps, right? So how do we do this, Esther? So I know we've talked a lot about different things. Some of them, again, could be very common sense. But I will tell you that it's going to come down to these three questions at the end of the day. Because when you're in it and you're doing the awareness diet, but you're still going to ask yourself the following three questions. 
am I increasing or decreasing my toxins right now? Am I building or am I breaking down my immune system? Am I feeding or am I starving those pathogens? And that's really where it's at. That's what's going to help us make those better choices. And, you know, you can apply everything we've talked to, talked about up to this point, and you can still use this tool here. This is a very big are, tool. Yeah, to these use. are very, very this, powerful. This is the simplest way to describe what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. So the next 30 day challenge. Woohoo! So this time we want you guys to really increase the foods that we're talking about here and continue. And many more. If and many fine, more, yeah. Go find new ones yes. in, the, in, in the stores. These are not, yes. you're not limited to these. No, no. There's no limit to how much of these foods you want. They're plant-based foods. Right. You just got to be careful about, you know, how you cook them, how you make them, how much oil, how much, yeah. how much, you know, other, other things you're using in this process. Um, you want to keep it simple. You want to keep it, you know, are we, are we talking about raw food here, Tom? Not always. So you, we, like we talk about potatoes are really well done steamed. Right. Like steamed potatoes are a great way to do it. I've learned, I've loved steaming now and they're very tasty. And, you and can it's act, super fast. Yeah, it's easy to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, these are things you can just explore. Now, another, you know, maybe we should talk here a little bit about, there's a lot, you know, there's a, like, it's hard to ingest all these vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. We have to be, we're, we're not animals grazing no. all day, right? No, right? But we do have some modern amenities. So we talked about a juicer for celery. Yep. So that's a fast way to get celery juice into our system. Yep. We talked about lemon water, drinking that throughout the day. We talked about teas, getting yes. hydration without caffeine, caffeinated, caffeinated products. Mm -hmm. So what we also can talk about smoothies. Yes. Because that's something we do every day. So Esther and I get up and do some lemon water, some celery juice, and then we'll do a smoothie. Now, smoothie, we can add lots of these foods. It's a great way to add kale. And I don't really love kale in the raw unless it's done well in a salad and people massage it and make it tasty. But otherwise, kale is kind of rough, you know, mm -hmm. I gotta be honest. Mm -hmm. But I love it in a smoothie. I can hardly taste it. Mm -hmm. And so our smoothies are sometimes almost half vegetables yeah. and then half fruits. And then, you know, we love the frozen blueberries. We love having all kinds of bananas and, and papayas and apples. And, you know, we do some dried figs. We do raw honey. And you can mix this in a blender. And now you've taken in such a tremendous amount of these foods that you mm -hmm. feel satiated. Right. You feel full and you feel clean and you have good energy. And as a result of doing this for about a year or so, I naturally stopped drinking coffee. Nice. And I didn't, I'd always thought from the beginning, I said, coffee's a plant. I'm never going to stop drinking coffee. <laughs> that was my, uh, you know, I first started down this path. I was like, no, 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 I'll do all these other things, but coffee, forget it. They're not taking it. I had the same problem with vodka. Did you? I know, yeah. We already know that you can't <laughs> drink that. So you can't use that anymore. So you, you're, you can't even smell vodka. You fall over. But, but we talked about, so the smoothies, you know, by the time you do some lemon water, juice some celery and make a smoothie, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of work. Um, there was a book I, I, I remember reading a long time ago called Chop Wood and Carry Water. So you got to spend a lot of time in a kitchen and you got to spend a lot of time when you're shopping in, in, the, in the vegetable areas and fruit areas. But that is actually a pleasure once you get used to doing it. And we'll so, talk more about the pitfalls and all that in part three. Part three, yes. So, but I wanted them yeah. to know that there's some tools. Use, get a very good blender. You know, uh, there's very good. Nutribullet. Uh, there, there's Nutribullet. There's yeah. Vitamix. All these ones out there. And you can start mixing and making some really delicious and super satisfying smoothies which is really our breakfast yes and we don't really eat much more we don't eat uh, after that until about you know one or two o'clock and we have a little i mean lunch you know we have other things we, we have snack, snack it. toast or this or that but again we'll talk about it mm -hmm. in part three okay um you know where we're talking about pitfalls we'll talk about a lot of different things about how we, what we do specifically um, so we don't want to give it too much away. Well, here. I think we're all, we want to give everything away. We want, to, we want everybody to get well. It's so a lot of information. What is? So they can also go to our website, wooziyvertigo.com, yes. and yes. you'll see some more information about how we produce, how well, we eat every day. Yes. You know, how, how do people like move forward eating just vegetables every day? So we have to find a way to make them very comfortable with that. Medical Medium, go to his site. He gives tremendous amounts of recipes on what to make. So you can have a lot of choices. Yes. You're not limited. There's more choices than there are restrictions. So again, let's talk about the 30 day challenge. So you wanna really increase these foods and you wanna to continue to work on avoiding the troublemakers. Very good combination. Okay. That's the winning combination. Yes.
So again, this is our website. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always email us. Our, my email is here at the bottom and uh, you can reach out, ask us any questions you like. And then this is our website and you can see the little arrow that's pointing you to the uh, nutritional support. And there's also the EQ support, which is right next door to it. And that talks a lot about, again, what we talked about today with the EQ support. So part three, uh, we do have the date now because we were waiting to hear about the date. It's gonna be September 22nd. And I'm sure you will see again, the, uh, the advertising coming out, you know, like you did these two parts and uh, same time, same bad channel. And, uh, you know, we're gonna be talking a lot about um, our pitfalls and, you know, things that happen on this journey. And, you know, what do we do? You know, when we, when we have these situations and, and uh, I think it's called when you, what you resist persists. Yes, yeah. that's what it uh, says right here. Yes. What we resist persists. <laughs> and so that's gonna be part three. It's gonna be really cool. <laughs> So at this point, we did very good on time and uh, we have some, some time for questions. So um, the ladies can open up the questions and we'll be happy to answer anything that anybody has uh, wants to share. Well, well if there, and if there is no questions, uh, then maybe we can give them a quick talk. Looks like David, David, do you have a question? I think I'll need, oh, there, there you go. Uh, hi, the last time <clears throat> I asked you a question about microbiome and, and, and recently I had a doctor prescribe me antibiotics and it changed my, uh, I don't know if I can say this on air, my BM. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what foods can we eat to bring that back to normalcy, the microbiome? Yes. Yeah, very good. First and foremost, uh, David, is the celery juicing. If you can do that, it'll help flush, flush out the byproducts of the, the antibiotic. You know, hopefully you're, you know, once you're done taking that, you won't have to continue taking it for too long, hopefully. And that will help to build, you know, the digestive tract back up. Um, and then you want to, you know, again, support, supporting the digestive tract, foods like, you know, uh, papaya, uh, bananas, apples, mm -hmm. things that you, melons are very mm -hmm. easy on the digestive tract, berries. all types of mel melons, blueberries, berries. all the berries, mm -hmm. very good to eat the fruits. The fruits are what we consider antioxidants. They'll stop you from aging. Literally, that's what reverses aging is those fruits. So they produce, they'll, they'll help the digestive tract a lot after you're done with the antibiotics. Antibiotics are hard on the digestive tract because don't, they not only kill the bad bacteria, but they also kill the good bacteria, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's just, right. it's just a tool that we have in modern science when you get an infection and, and when, you know, when we really need them, they are very valuable, but if we overuse them, we have a problem in modern society, the overuse of antibiotics, which creates what mutations, because that tries to kill the bacteria. It never kills 100%, it always kills 90% or and whatever's left over can reproduce and become resistant to these antibiotics. So that's where we're getting into trouble is, is humans. We're, we're trying to solve a problem without looking at a bigger picture, another way to do it. You know, letting food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So that was what Hippocrates taught us way back when. And I think it's time to revisit that again, really clearly. So um, do that. The other thing, uh, David, try some aloe water. You know, you can take the plant. Aloes, most people know you can rub aloe on a sunburn and it'll help you heal. But if you take just the, remember never to eat the, the green part of it, just take out the jelly part from the middle, you know, fillet it and, and put that in some water and in a blender. You can and you add, can mix it into your smoothies. You can mix in your smoothies, yeah. And, and when you make a smoothie with like spinach or kale or arugula, the greens in those, in those foods are your available bioavailable bio proteins. They're easy to digest, David. And then you mix some blueberries in that, some, you know, some papaya, some apples, whatever you like, even, and then a little raw honey, all those are going to kill the bad bacteria in your gut. Here's where you also want to stay away from gluten, right? Because gluten does feed the bad bacteria in the gut. Um, and so, and we want to avoid some eggs and dairy. Now, some people say, well, I feel better when I eat the eggs or dairy. Yeah, because, you know, it's mushy, it's gushy, it's doughy. And there's an emotional component there 
because these are our comfort foods and our and our memory our body's memory is holding on to that so i remember whenever we have a good work day or, or we wanted to celebrate something i would be like oh let's go get pizza and then you know i would be it'd be done i'd be done the next day i would be like hunched over you know what i mean yes, so yes. so what i had to do is i had to unlearn and get my emotional connection to these foods to 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 connect to the foods now that were doing better for me like getting a you know a healthier plant-based meal that i could now learn that you know what this is my reward food mm -hmm. this is so, this is better yeah so on a practical level level david to, to recap you know drink lemon water whenever you can to help flush the system um, you want to flush the byproducts and the toxins out of the body. Drinking the celery juice is every day if you can, even twice a day if you're feeling not that good. And then, you know, doing the smoothies, you know, making a, a good a good meal out of a smoothie. And then eating every hour or two a piece of fruit, some vegetables, you know, whatever you like. So because when you when you eat this kind of food, you know, you process it easier. It's easier on our digest digestive system. If you're having a hard time with digestive system in our What We Resist Persists, we'll talk about mono eating and how to combine certain foods to heal, really deep healing. But for now, pick and choose whatever plant-based foods you can. And then there's some grains you can eat. You can do oatmeal. You know, you can do quinoa. You can do a little millet. bit of millet. You know, you try to stay with the grains. A little bit of rice mm -hmm. is okay. Yeah, totally. We love rice. Rice, rice is fine. Potatoes. Potatoes, Potatoes are excellent. Easy to digest, David. Excellent. So make sure you have an abundance of foods that you can enjoy. Because if you, if you don't, you're going to, you know, that's where people, you know, struggle. Yeah. And, and it's hard to move forward with that. So yeah. we're doing that every day. And like I said, today, we're, we were rushing to get to work. And we had other things we're busy with. So we stopped and we found, you know, a Middle Eastern restaurant you know, uh, and we had our, our fix of, we had delicious uh, vegetables in, in a nice presented way. So even if you're going out, you can choose, you can choose wisely too. We notice when we go out, if you find that the restaurant doesn't have a lot of good vegetable choices, go to their side, yes, exactly. side menu, their, their side dishes. Right. And you can get like Brussels sprouts, asparagus, yeah. you can get all those varieties. I want to talk of, more about that in part three. three. Yeah. So I don't know, does that answer your question, David? It looks like I'm doing all the right things. Yay! Yay. Good job. <laughs> what? Yay. I have another question. If uh, no one else has a question, um, does anybody sure. else have a have a question? We just want to make sure everybody gets a turn. So far, so good. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. In your presentation, you talked about uh, using oil, you know olive oil and other uh, healthy oils. Well, I when I stir fry vegetables, I use water instead of oil. That way I don't have a lot of heavy oils in, in my veins. Bravo, nice. bravo. That's David, you are, you are leaps and bounds ahead of what most people would understand because you're right. If you, if you, you can stir fry with water. You can actually, uh, we request now from places to stir, to stir fry with no oil, to stir fry with water. And you're right. He said the really key thing, you don't have oil in your veins. You don't have fat floating around and making your blood hard, the blood hard to circulate. So very smart, David, you're very, if you have this mindset, you'll keep finding ways to like what you described, how to cook. How well, to I, I, I didn't want any fat in my brain. I don't want to be a fat head. <laughs> That's <Yes>. right. <laughs> <laughs> or a meathead, right? Isn't that, meat that, wasn't that from one of those? Meathead, head. that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, a meathead. Very good. So, bravo, David. I think you you have an awareness, and I think it's what Esther talked about. If you have this awareness, yes. that's the first step. Yes. Because then, with awareness, you've taken action, David. Mm -hmm. And action, you've made decisions. Right. Now you're 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 really making choices in your health in your life at the moment that are really going to lead you into a direction of health and wellness and recovery versus further down the path of illness and disease. Right. So right. I can't even acknowledge you more. I, I wish if everybody had your attitude and mindset, you would see a real shift in our society. It's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I understand. It's a big battle, right? But we have to keep speaking it and trying it because people at least have to hear it. Yes. Then it's we like have to be the stop. leader. Yes. We, we have and to leave by and it's doing not it. easy. It's exactly, not easy. No. You know, you know, like I always say, I'm never going to be a purist because it's a very hard thing to do. And uh, it's a lifelong challenge. So what are you going to do? Right. But when we know better, we, we do, do better. better. At least you try to. Exactly. <laughs> 
Uh, I'll give you another example. Today I was driving, doing errands. I went by uh, Publix and I, they have chocolate eclairs there. And I said to myself, I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. <laughs> well, then I went you by do another... that while I have an eclair, David, because <laughs> I, I totally had that eclair. That's you my did. battle too. That's her weakness. You just picked out Esther's weakness. She I goes and she eclairs. looks at those those eclairs and those. You know, well, I'm going to give it away. I haven't seen, in part, I in part I haven't three, we'll talk. One, I know we'll talk about this more in part three. But like one of the pitfalls is, you know, what can you do when you really want it? You know. So I used to, I would like smell stuff. So mm. I would smell it and then it would, it would give me the fix that I need. And then it would just be over. That's a good and tool. so that's a tool. I'm giving that away because it's part three, but uh, that's what I do. I would just smell the stuff and then I'd be like, okay, I'm good. And then I'd run away. <laughs> See, and I, I'm the other end of that. If I look at the eclair, it looks appealing and all that. But I think about, ooh, that has eggs and dairy and gluten and chocolate. And if I eat that- <laughs> And Kevin, right? Exactly. If I put, I said, he's so that, logical, it makes me crazy. Yeah, I, use, like, I, I don't care logic. about all that. I, I just logic. have to smell it and she, run. <laughs> she has a different way. So everyone's different. Whatever works to help you to exactly. make those steps and avoid the pitfall. Exactly. Do it. Do whatever works for you. Yeah. Level of crazy. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh. There's one. Okay, Renee, Renee go ahead. So um, I've been a vegetarian for like 47 years now. And just this last year, I started having digestive issues. And I'm trying to like do this reset because I can't yet figure out what it is that's causing the problem. I was in the hospital. I saw a nutritionist and it's just like somehow my body adapted to this eating and it's throwing a fit all of a sudden after not eating those foods. I'm not at all attracted to those things after all these years. So do you have a suggestion for how to like do a reset and try to get back um, to feeling okay and not having digestive issues? Well, Renee, when you say, so you're having digestive issues, um, you say you're vegetarian for many years, 47, 47, but did you vegetarians still can eat eggs and dairy? I don't eat. I'm allergic to like a so, hundred items and eggs and dairy are in those allergies. Okay. okay. Good. You're, good. good. You're so lucky. you're, you're more beat than you're actually more vegan. Is that correct? Uh, or, yeah, but I what don't, animal like, products I don't would, like to say that because I don't eat, I'm allergic to nuts, so I don't eat nuts. And okay. you know, most vegan food has nuts in it. So I, I just try to say I'm a vegetarian. Actually, I just say I don't eat meat and that's how I live. Okay. So are you, yeah, I like the word plant-based because that makes it- Yeah, plant-based diet. Yeah, okay. now, um, so, so I guess what can you give me, I guess I wanna know a little more like what is your breakfast, lunch and dinner, but we may not have enough time here to do all that. But I would right. say, do you do, have you tried celery juicing? Yeah, I do celery juicing. Every morning, you do that every morning? No, I do three times, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay, so maybe ramping it up to every day. To, remember, it's yeah. a medicine, like an herb. So it'll be yeah. a little thing. Remember, I, I mentioned to David about the aloe. I don't, you do ingest any aloe? Yeah, I, I love aloe. I did it for a long time. I'm not doing it now, but I maybe did do it in the beginning in October, November. Then the second, the third thing I would recommend if you're really struggling with your digestion is what we call mono eating. You know, a medical medium talks about that and that you would okay. just, you would eat like, you'd have to eat lettuce, do celery juicing, and then you pick, you know, like, like steamed white potatoes, you know, and eat that like for two or three days, just those, those items, just sing, just to give your digestive tract a single thing to work on. Sometimes our, our digestive tracts, because of emotional stressors, you know, or or you know, other stressors, we have a lot of adrenaline, we gotta do a lot of work. It puts a lot of strain on our digestive system. You know, our, have more than half of our brain is involved in our digestive tract. Mm -hmm. So you know, make sure maybe that's another option for you. Look at look up mono eating on okay. your medical medium and take a few days and he has variations. You can mono eat bananas and papayas. You can mono eat uh, potatoes. You can do asparagus and um, Brussels sprouts. So there's variations he talks about, and that's really to help you reset your digestive system to give Great. it a break and recover. And just so you know, when we have allergies, it means we're gifted. 
It means we're gifted. It's not a bad thing. It means that your body has now become so, um, I would say, I don't want to say like sensitive. Yes. But it's like, it's like a gift. You're being shown and being directed to what's working and what's not working. So it's a very good place to be. Even, yeah. And if you follow, you know, the tools that we're providing and medical medium is providing, you will, you will be able to heal. And then make sure you're taking a look at the trouble, the troublemakers, yes. right? Making sure that you're avoiding those troublemakers. Vinegar was one for me that I found as I was moving toward plant-based that snuck into a lot of foods, you know, citric yeah, I acid. I can't do vinegar either. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Citric acid Good. is in a lot of products, which is really bad for the digestive tract. Canola oil. You know, you're, you seem very pure in what you're doing. So, but these things, if, sometimes they sneak in and we yes. don't really realize them. So just pay attention to troublemakers. Make sure there's no colognes or exactly. chemicals in, in and around your environment. Yeah. Yes. You know, because if you're allergic to nuts and seeds, you're, it sounds like you're not eating much in the, you're not eating high fat either, are you? So you're probably no. low fat because probably your liver and gallbladder may, you may have inherited some toxins from your, from your family and you're dealing with that too. So some of what we talk about is to help you clean even not only what you've been exposed to as you were born here, but what you were given from your genetics. We call it inherited toxins. Not so much. You don't have genes are going to be genes are not faulty. It's just that we right. do pass on toxins from generation to generation. So that's maybe some of the stuff you're battling. Yeah. And you know, what's funny, anybody who's starting this, I would say, who's just beginning the journey that other people just don't get it. Like yeah. on the whole, it aggravates people because if I do go to a restaurant and, and they go, well, is there anything on the menu you can eat? And I'll say, well, do they have lettuce? You know, <laughs> um, yeah, then there's something there I can eat. Well, why does it bother other people that I am choosing to eat lettuce? So I can, okay. and I say, I'm not going for the food. I make great food and food that I love to eat. Yeah. I'm going for the company right. or just to be served. I'm right. not going. And it so aggravates like the majority of people I know. Yes. They always say, oh, no, we have to accommodate you. No, right. you don't have to accommodate that person. We can, we can yeah, find and, ways. And, and you know what, Renee? I had that. I had that happening when I was in corporate. And a lot of, um, you know, I would go out to lunch and a lot of my you know, coworkers would be the same way. It was at the beginning of my journey before I even found Tom. And I was having the issue with the gluten at that time. And that was my thing. I couldn't have gluten and I couldn't have dairy. And they would just get so annoyed with me. And I was like, what's your problem? I'm not making you eat it. You right. do whatever you want. So stay out of my face, you know? So it was like, I decided at that time to stop going with them because right. unfortunately, if they couldn't be supportive, they weren't really my friends. So because real friends will support you. And so it is a hard thing. And that's why community and tribe, finding the perfect tribe for you that will support you is super important. And it's not easy. It's not easy to find either. Yeah. So we, we keep lists of restaurants that we, yeah. we like and we don't like, and we don't avoid we the do. ones that we don't because like, the, yeah, and we've educated lots of chefs and waiters and people about like why we're making these choices. And then they come back and the chefs will say, well, I'm glad you told me about this. We're going to try to in include something like this for you next time. And yeah. so we really appreciate, I think we can make a difference each individual as we go out and just trying to make these requests in a nice way, you know, right, like, you, right. like you do, Renee, you find things, if you can find things on a menu that you can manage to eat, you know, and it doesn't have to, it's just funny how people have such an emotional attachment to changing right. or to seeing someone who doesn't eat the way they eat. Right. So it's just one of those things we have to go through. It's very hard it's very and we, re we can totally relate. Yes. But keep going. You're yes. going the right way. <laughs> yes. So introduce aloe, celery juice every day. Look into mono eating. Yes. And yeah, see I'm going to do that. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, I think Rachel Rose came on because she has a question. Do you have a question? No, no. Okay. comment. All right. No comment. No, comments, no questions. Comment. We won't bite. Well, maybe. Pam <laughs> <laughs> has been uh, writing on the on the chat. Wait. She says, Pam Kellner. Wait, who? Pam? Yes. She okay. Says, I wanted to mention how important it is to eat organic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about organic. Uh, yes. Now, you know, you can't always buy organic. And maybe, you know, I think maybe Renee's up and up against this too. So we say things you can peel like yeah. avocados, 
Um, no, no, Pam asked a question. I know Pam, Pam asked her, but okay. I said, Renee's been, you know, vegan, okay. vegetarian for sorry, many sorry. years. So we try to buy organic whenever we can. We like to, I say when you buy something in a store, you're voting with your dollar. Yeah. You know, if you think about it, every they're monitoring every time we spend a dollar, what product we buy. So I take the time and we've done a lot of this yesterday, looking for products that we support. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, organics we want to support, but if it's not good quality and, and like sometimes we've had to buy conventional celery because mm -hmm. the, the organic celery just looks terrible. Right. So you do need to sometimes go to a conventional, conventional uh, produce and that's okay. Spend a little, it takes a little more energy to wash it because we don't want to concentrate pesticides or residues of pesticides on the product if we're going to juice it. So you just take a little extra time to clean it. But when you can, I would move towards organics and that would help the society see that that's what they need to move to right. using less chemicals to right. grow these foods. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pam, for mentioning that. Yes. Rose, you have a, uh, I mean, Rachel, you have a question? Yeah, I, no, a comment. I comment, think. okay. I think if you also bless whatever food that you were eating, if you can't get organic, I mean, if you really bless it and ask God to feed your body yes. nutritionally that it really it doesn't make it does make a difference but it doesn't make a difference because yes. you're blessing it you're, it's the intention that the sure. food is sure. give you. That's very, sorry, no, um, that's very important what you're saying. And that goes back to the spirituality aspect, you know, the mind, body, spirit. And that's very true what you're saying. Um, you know, there was, a, I saw a, um, sometimes we watch different YouTubes with different, you know, gurus and this and that, just always learning, always learning. And this guy, he's an Indian of Indian descent. And he was talking about how, you know, back in the day when the grandmothers would make our food and you would present the food to the family, there was a certain energy that came with the food. And so he was reminding us that it's important to let the food sit in front of you for just a few minutes, just so that that energy can be your energy. And so actually, after I watched him, I've been doing that now, like whenever we go to a restaurant, you know, and the food comes out, I'll just sit there for a few minutes and just look at the food and just kind of like let it sit with me and we bond. And, you know, I start to create a bond with my food and it's very cool. There's a special uh, connection that you actually create. And so that's a very good point. You know, in addition to that, Rachel, uh, medical medium taught me, and I, I was new to this a couple of years ago, he talks about angels. Mm -hmm. And he says, you can call on angels, you know, who oversee food and, and ask the angel to deactivate any chemical or pesticide in a produce. That's what I call, yeah, that's really cool. I never thought about it. I asked the angels to come in when I can bless everything, but I never asked them to. And I, I'm a pretty down to earth kind of yeah. level guy. Even though I'm an acupuncturist, but I'm pretty, you know, I'm traditional kind yeah. of, like, I got to feel it, see it and believe it. But when I started practicing that, it's a very powerful tool. So what you're talking about blessing, I, you can actually call in an angel, call in angels who oversee and protect us from pesticides and residues to deactivate them in the food so that the food, you get only the nutrient, not the, not the, not the harmful chemical in there. Yeah. So very good point, Rachel. Yeah, to bring great, up. great stuff. So anybody else want to share or have a question? Um, I just want to add, Pam brought up about organic food. And I order, I don't make any money on this, but I order from Misfits. If you've ever ordered from them, you know, it's a two week, every two week delivery if you do. And now they've changed it. You don't have to go on a plan. You can go on one time and not order again. And my, I get the celery from them. You were mentioning about the celery and it's less than non-organic celery is at Publix. Nice. So Great suggestion. It, it's really, it's a minimum $35 order. And I have to tell you, I order every single, every two weeks I go on on Friday afternoon. That's when you're supposed to order and get great things and sometimes don't spend more than 35 bucks. Wow. Can you order just celery or? You yeah. Order extra? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a 35 minimum, but for sure you could order celery and it's like a buck 99 for organic. That's I got it sitting in the other room because I buy like five of them at a time. But you can get heirloom tomatoes like for $1.99 for a pound. And I use a lot of radishes. I cook them Excellent. as well as Excellent. eating them raw. And you can get those for the, and they're all, everything there is organic. They do also have organic 
um, grains and things. I've never ordered those, so I can't speak to those. But the veggies, they have a wide selection and it changes. It's not the same all the time, you know? I got apricots this week, organic apricots and white peaches that are gorgeous. Nice. But they, they, recommendation. Yeah. They, there are things that can't be sold in the store. So the celery might have one stalk that has some brown on it, or an eggplant might be misshapen. And really, it, I laugh. Sometimes I do a box a video opening the box because it, sometimes it's just entertaining. But, mm -hmm. but really, I recommend it. It was recommended to me, and I've been doing it a bit, the whole time during the, the COVID uh, isolation quarantine. Nice. So very good take a look at it. Misfits.com. Yeah. Misfits.com. Very good. Very good. Great. That's great. Thank you so much. So anybody else before we so, call it a day? And that's an example, you know, Renee, of like taking Being creative. Creative, like yes. taking action, finding yes. ways to help support the community, yes. find ways to be supported while we do while we go down this plant-based based uh path, you know, path. And yes. I think that's very super great suggestion. Great suggestion. Yeah. So I think that's it. Okay. So uh, we want to go to our, we just want to finish with our quotes, very important. Uh, and then we're so excited to see everybody on part three. And again, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, whatever, please feel free to reach out to us. And, um, you know, we love to, um, I was going to, you know, kind of throw this out there that if anybody wants to continue to uh, connect with their tribe and and really just uh, maybe hang out one day when we all go out to eat and we can not you know hurt each other's feelings on what we're ordering <laughs> we can support each other so reach out to us and we'll we'll have a, a, a play date you know sounds, sounds, sounds good fun. Sounds fun. so awesome all right so with that our quotes are reveal to heal what you resist persists and when you know better you do better and when you know and understand yourself, the world will know and understand you too. And you guys can join in and remember, remember what's, what's the, the best, best that, that can happen. happen. <laughs> so thank you so much, guys, for being with us. We so appreciate you. Yes. And we're so proud of each and every one of you for making an effort, baby yes. steps. And uh, let's connect soon, okay? We'll, play, we'll plan that play date. Okay, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.